Hey, in this video I want to take 10 minutes of your time to tell you a bunch of useless information about GTA, which you'll probably forget about as soon as you click off this video. Ready? Let's go. GTA 5 is the most profitable commercial entertainment product of all time. It's been sold over 140 million times, which has given Rockstar over $6 billion in sales alone. There has been a total of 38 content updates to GTA Online. You will need 47,551,850 RP to get to level 1000. You will also need a staggering 1,787,576,850 RP to get to level 8000. It's hardly likely that this level will never be reached legitimately. There is a pipe behind this arcade that if shot will spurt out gas. This gas can make you fall over. It's possible to trap someone by continuously shooting the pipe. There was a removed heist from GTA 5 story mode that had Michael and Trevor rob La Fuente Blanca. There is loads of evidence of this in the game files. The heist was called the Shimuta job and had three approaches. Stealth approach, mime approach and clown approach. All of these approaches had you go into a supposedly named nice house to take a safe, rob a horse and kidnap a wife, which is presumably Martin Madrazo's wife, Patricia. There is loads of information which I can't go into now as the video will be more than 10 minutes long. So if you want to know more, check out this video by Vadim M. There will be a link in the description. By parachuting under the map, you can access an unused comedy club. This was most likely supposed to be an activity that you could do in story mode. It's unknown why this was cut out of the game. There was an interview with Imram Sorwal, who is the director of design at Rockstar Games. The interview took place in 2017. In this interview, Imram said that GTA Online in 2014 was close to failing. He mentions that this is because of the lack of interesting updates around this time, that the community and even Rockstar themselves weren't excited about. This changed when they started to get more ambitious with their updates. It seems like the one update that saved GTA from going under was the heist update, which brought a massive amount of player base back to the game. That's just another reason why the heist update is by far my favourite update. The casino and the Maze Bank Arena were supposed to be accessible in GTA Online from the very start. There's an unused line of dialogue from Lester that talks about the casino. So listen, I just heard a casino opened up in town. Apparently it's pretty fun. Maybe you want to check it out. There's also an unused interior and dialogue from Dom that talks about the Maze Bank Arena. Hey, this sick indoor dirt track arena has opened in town. They're running time trials at the Kickstart Arena, so might be a chance for you to step it up. There's a very slight mark on the Widowmaker texture in the weapon wheel. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. There are some unused lines of dialogue from the police responder that mention some DLC vehicles, such as the RC Bandito and Go-Kart. This dialogue is from 2013, which is way before any of these DLC vehicles came out. RC Bandito, Go-Kart, Squatty, Combine, Wayfarer, Hellfury, Haikumai, Bobcat, Faraki, Pair of Roller Skates, Skateboard, Motorized Skateboard, at this location, there's a shack with a massive orange on top of it. This orange can be shot off and rolled around. There's a random floating square in the sky that says, this does not exist. This was put in purely to mess with people. Here's something else you'll have trouble on seeing. These cranes at the docks look a bit like turtles when you're on the map. At least for me, anyway. In this cemetery, you'll find a path that leads to a nice little seating area. This bench in the middle has writing on it that says, in memory of Chris Edwards. Chris Edwards was a graphic designer at Rockstar, who unfortunately passed away in 2014. It's nice of them to have made this quiet little spot in memory of him. In the same cemetery, you can sometimes see a dog that walks around by itself. The dog would eventually come to a stop in front of this grave and will start whining. This is most likely a reference to Grey Fry's Bobby, who was a Sky Terrier that visited and guarded his owner's grave every day for 14 years before passing himself in the 14th of January 1872. During GTA 5's story, swear words are said over 2,400 times. The person who swears the most is Franklin, with a total of 655 times. The road at this location seems to confuse the NPC drivers. They often try to take this corner way too fast. For some reason, these dials on the long fin are flipped. So when the boat is stationary, the dials will show that it's going 120 miles per hour. As you go faster, the dials will show that you're slowing down. I've no clue how they managed to mess this up. At this location, there's a spray painted image of a green smiley face in this tunnel. This face is an inside joke among many game companies. It can be found in many different games, such as Battlefield 3, The Sims 4, Overwatch, 
Borderlands 3, and many, many more. If you set your vehicle access to no one while in a Ruiner 2000, other players that try to get into your car will get shocked. There's quite a few guns and weapons which never made it into the final version of the game. The most interesting of which is the Assault Sniper, Heavy Rifle, Assault MG, and the Programmable AR, which looks to be a more advanced grenade launcher. Chop seems to hate talk shows on the radio. If you let him in your car and put a talk show on, he'll start barking. If you shoot above the back left wheel of any car, which is where the petrol tank is located, you can almost instantly blow it up. Also, shooting the petrol tank will make petrol slowly leak out of the car. After some time, the car will run out of petrol and will stop working. This only works in story mode. Lamar Davis was actually supposed to be a playable character in GTA 5 story mode. Evidence of this comes from Lamar's voice actor, who did a Reddit Ask Me Anything. He said that he caught a case and was tied up for a few months. Rockstar had to move on and, presumably, scrap the bigger plans they had for Lamar's character. The Summer Special update was originally going to be a Cops and Crooks update. However, due to the recent events at the time, a police-focused update would have been extremely distasteful. So they scrapped it and made it into the much smaller, less exciting Summer Special update we have today. There is still some evidence of this update in the game files, like the cubed arcade machine having a comment saying, Cops and crooks back. There's also some leftovers of a stun grenade and a flash grenade. There are three different mission complete themes that were never used. These songs were supposed to play for each of the playable protagonists when they completed the mission. If you wear this grey-blue shirt as Michael, doing combat rolls will cause his shirt to fly upwards and you'll be able to see through his torso. You can now practice your KO Perico hacking skills with the arcade hacking device. It's pretty cool that they added this in. Speaking of arcades, there were supposed to be two new arcade machines. One of them was a manhunt themed arcade machine that looks pretty similar to the Badlands Revenge. The other game looks like it was going to be a 3D shooter. It has these 3D textures, which looks to be in the same style as Doom. When playing as Michael, if you combine these clothes, a shaved head, a long beard and glasses, he will look very similar to Max Payne from Rockstar's Max Payne 3. The tennis court at this location makes your character walk very weirdly. It also gives the effect of your character shrinking. The black awnings at this location are very slippery for some reason. This can lead to some pretty funny results. During GTA 5's development, Rockstar planned to have many more trees and vegetation around the map. You can see this in some early trailers and screenshots. However, due to hardware limitations, the amount of vegetation was drastically reduced. According to these build logs, the game was running at around 9 to 10 FPS, so it's quite clear why this change was made. In the original GTA 5 trailer, you can see a lot of old assets that are ripped straight out of GTA 4, like this police car, these cops, this police helicopter, and this ambulance. During a casino heist, it's possible to see the old and deconstructed casino sign. This is a pretty cool nod to the old casino. During the KO Perico heist, there's a rare chance that it can be stormy weather. If this happens, the guard's visibility will be reduced. The Sparrow is the only flying vehicle that can bypass yacht defences. Whether this is intentional or not, it can be quite useful in some PvP scenarios. The teaser trailer for the KO Perico heist shows an older model of the Kosatka. The lights are at the front instead of them being at the top like we have now. This same Kosatka model can still be found in-game during the KO Perico heist. Most DLC vehicles in GTA Online have a lot less damage and deformation compared to vehicles that were a part of the base game. For example, if we compare a Sentinel to the Komoda by smashing them into a wall a few times, you can see that the Sentinel crumbles a lot more than the Komoda. There was a cut radio station called Pre-Millennium Radio, or PMR for short. This was likely a 90s alternative rock slash metal station. This station was likely replaced by VBR, as it also contains 90s rock. 
In Vespucci Beach, there used to be this large metal art piece. This was removed and replaced by this rusty art piece three months after the game's release. This is because the original artist, Mark D. Severo, who created this piece on Venice Beach, didn't want his artwork portrayed in-game, and asked Rockstar to remove it. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed listening to those utterly useless facts about GTA. If you know of any more useless facts, please let me know in the comments. I'll pin the most useless one. Anyway, I'll see you later.